and this is it. My story is a long story, but yeah, a, very, it's very, a very, very, very nice story because I leave for this job every middle day I have an idea. I want to write a book. I want to yeah, yeah. write a paper. It's all of us. Yes. It's our, uh, yesterday I was asking awesome for the, what are your hobbies? And yeah. he said to me, Run last day, I think running yeah. last day, I look for this. Yeah. This is our hobby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Rhino Pass Podcast with me, Dr. Cameron McIntosh. As season three is unique in face-to-face -face interactions, we find ourselves in Belgium and Brussels, the European Rhino Pass course, and I have the absolute pleasure of having a co-director of the course all the way from Italy, Dario Bottassi, speaking with me today on the podcast. Dario, thank you so much for being My pleasure, Cameron. Nice to meet you here again and uh, very happy to be part of this podcast. So Dario, I'm, I'm, I mean, we, you are sitting here now, it's June in Brussels, but in a few months time, there's a big meeting in Verona. Do you want to tell our listeners about that? Oh yeah, that is great. This will be like the European Academy Facial Plastic Surgery meeting. And this meeting will be a huge event because we have already more than 200 people from the faculty, Goodness. which will be coming from all around the world, from the United States, from uh, South Africa, from Asia, from uh, all the countries in order to bring the people to see all the different perspectives in not only in rhinoplasty, but also in facelift, also in blepharoplasty mm -hmm. and a, a little part also will be dedicated also to the non surgical procedures. Yeah. Now, Dario, this is your first rodeo, right? No? And you were telling me that as a student, you were already organizing meetings. Yeah, that was a great opportunity for myself. I, I, I had a chance to take uh, two residencies. The first one was maxillofacial official surgery and the second was not to learn college. But the first one at the third year, uh, my wife got the idea to say to me, let's make a translation of the Gene Tardy book in the art and science, right? Yes. Last and not. So I wrote him and I get, went to Chicago in 1999 and uh, I said to Jim Tardy, Jim, I think I will never be like as big as you are now. You have plenty of patience and you are starting 7 a.m. with all these people talking about rhinoplasty, all the giants, you know, like uh, everybody was there and it was a great meeting. <clears throat> and he said to me, come with me please tonight at 7. We have a cocktail for the faculty dinner and to do something. And I went there and he came, he went to every and each one of the people there. He went to Gilbert Ayash, he went to Gilbert Dostunite, he went to everybody. He said, I want to in Verona. And we made the best meeting ever in the no. last Yes, it was 1999 in Chicago and then 2000 in Verona. And then I translated this book, which was a success in Italy because uh, it's a great yeah, opportunity to start the basics of rhino plastic until they get more sophisticated. Wow, so 25 years later, you have been meeting with 200 faculty. So for the listeners, tell us a little bit more about you, Darius. Where, where do you come from? How do you end up doing what you do? Yeah, this is a strange story, you know, as, as usual for people, there is something in the background. But if you don't have a past, you don't have a future, you know, they say so. My past was really falling in love with the general surgery. And I was as a student uh, working so hard in general surgery because my idea was to get into the field of um, um, small bowel transplantation or liver transplantation. And I was at the University of Padua, which celebrated this year 800 years of opening. It's a very old university. And by chance, I got in contact with a guy which was my mentor, which was Professor Fernand which got me in the theater, like uh, when I was uh, almost finished as a student of medicine in medical school in maxillofacial official surgery. So uh, I got in love with the fact that you can reshape the face by cutting the bones and enlarge them, mm -hmm. move them, shift them. And uh, I, I wanted to balance the faces, which is something that still intrigued me because uh, all the facial aesthetics comes from the the support of the bones, mm -hmm. even the aging process is so interesting to me. And by the time he was uh, interested in rhinoplasty, he was making close rhinoplasty. So I started my career mm -hmm. with the close rhinoplasty and, and, and minute by minute, 
I got in love with this field and uh, eventually I expanded to the face data and all the other procedures. So I'm not sure you but of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I wanted to understand a little bit more of the physiology because there was no science mm -hmm. and no surgical treatments. So yeah. I published almost 40 papers for these companies yeah. you know, to get a little bit more of science behind them. Mm -hmm. And from that time, I moved to a second specialty, which was the ENT. And uh, I became consultant, and then an associate professor, and then poor professor. And then this is uh, my life at the University of Verona, where I perform uh, like congenital abnormalities, um, plastics, and then uh, moving around the world, I train people in different uh, fields. And this is it. My story is a long story, but ah, a, very, it's, it's very, a very, 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 very nice story because I live for this job. Every minute I have an idea, I want to write a book, I want to yeah, write yeah. a paper, as all of us. Yes. Uh, it's our, uh, yesterday I was asking awesome for the, what are your hobbies? And yeah. he said to me, Run last day, I think Run yeah. last day, I look for this. Yeah, that, this is our hobby. Yeah, yeah. sure. So it, it, this upsurge of uh, uh, neuromodulators and fillers, where do you think that fits into the world of Run? Oh, that fits very well. Uh, by chance, uh, I'm making a very interesting study now uh, because there is a concept of myomodulation mm. that is related particularly to the fillers because uh, there is a guy whose name is uh, uh, Richard Amaya, who is coming from um, uh, Brazil. Yes. He's a global speaker for a company and he claims that, that there is a, such a kind of mind modulation on the muscles of the face. Yes. If you inject below or above them, okay. hyaluronic acid. And in yeah, regards to the nose, we are making actually two research studies. One is on the uh, aesthetics of the nose and they're related to the injection of the IG brand, very IG brand filler. Yeah. Combined with the uh, toxin, because we yes. know that the depressor septi nazi and the levetro leguis uh, nazi and the uh, sorry's are muscles that can be very well influenced not only by the botulinum toxin, which is yes. the, the, the question you were mentioning, but also by the filler. Because if you inject a specific amount on the levetro leguis, there will be an increase in breathing uh, capabilities of patients but also a decrease of the power of the vitro lakers. So the unbalanced uh, noses that you can see in some patients will be uh, very well manipulated because it lasts almost one year and a half. So if you repeat mm -hmm. these injections, it will be okay. And the second study we are doing is to open the nasal valve with a candle injection of a specific amount of filler in order to get the proper yeah. breathing function for some of our patients. So there is you know, at the beginning, my first paper for a company was to contrast these yes. fillers. I didn't like the idea of injecting fillers in the face. Of yes. This. And uh, by chance, I got in love with uh, the um, this because I saw that it was a little bit of a change in high days, early days level in the blood mm -hmm. of patients related to the circadian uh, circle. And so I said, I have to find out a little bit of more science because you see that if you go in the meetings of uh, uh, these this big meetings, huge meetings, 13, 15,000 people of medical aesthetics, everybody is claiming something that they have no science behind yes. because the company are pushing forward mm. everyone to do this. So people, gynecologists, dentists, and whatever, and all, they all mm. claim that they can get the best result. Even people with no residents in you know, mm. nothing. Mm. Right? In some countries, there are nurses that can do that professionally for sure, yes. but there must be a proper training for these people because mm. it's not, it's not uh, a very easy procedure, particularly on the nose because you can get blindness if you inject it yeah. in wrong places. So that's my idea. So I have a little bit of, uh, of uh, time dedicated to the uh, non-surgical procedures. By the way, I wrote two books about that. Mm. One is surgical around glass and one is on the full face with shaving related to anatomy, because I think there must be a little bit of a science. Absolutely. So Dario, I question you, two questions. In terms of those books, how would the listeners be able to get hold of it? Do you have a website or something? Oh, so uh, I didn't put on the website, they are edited by Taylor Francis, so they can find it easily on Amazon. Okay. Okay. And then coming back to the Verona meeting, 
it, it, for people to be able to come and get training in this? Is it, is it one of the things that's going to be offered? Yeah, this uh, must be very well uh, uh, underlined that the European Academy is a, an academy that is giving a service to the, particularly to the young doctors. So let's say that the, the more experienced doctor since a long time started this uh, academy in order to uh, spontaneously deliver knowledge. No, because every one of us has his own training courses and everything related to our business activities. But in particular, once a year, we decide to deliver science to the young generation, so which is to me the core uh, idea of creating future generations with people that are able to make the best knowledge in the, in the patients. So particularly related to the meeting, it's a four day meeting. So it's a very intensive, um, let's say meeting that starts from 7 a.m. and finishes at 6.30 with very interesting activities outside of the meeting because Verona is an amazing town with lots of history and then the surroundings, you can go to the mountains, hiking, you go to Venice, you can go to Milan, but before this meeting, we decided to make uh, three wet labs. And by the way, there are four wet labs in two days because we have a big facility with the red floors where you can get the proper training for facelifts. There will be Andrew Yacono, there will be the McCordon, there will be Gitile, there will be many people from around the world coming to train us in, in, in uh, facelifts. But then there will be rhinoplasty, there will be me, you, and many others that are here at the meeting. Then non-surgical uh, treatments and then the fluoroplasty. This is the way I love. And the last day is Sunday 17. And the day after, we will have eight live surgeries uh, recorded for the European Academy. There will be two facelifts, four rhinoplasty, one lip lift, and one blepharoplasty. Wow. So that will be Fantastic. an intensive event yeah. where people can spend some time before the event, let's say in two or three days, which is the weekend before, to get uh, an idea of what is the environment of the Benito region, which is the yeah. one of the most beautiful in Italy. We have wine tasting areas, we have yeah. biking areas, laying is 10 minutes, just 10 minutes, you can kind of surf, you can do whatever in the sports, you can hike in the best mountains ever in the Dolomites. So I want to to intrigue you all to, yeah. to come to the meeting because everybody says to me, where is the best place in life you want to live? Yeah. And I can really sincerely tell you that I say always very well now my time. It's not my time because I was born in Venice, but I have to admit that it's uh, like a, a very small town, it's 500,000 people, but it has everything uh, linked to that. Yeah, well, guys, you better make sure you register and come to, to your own. I think it's going to be amazing. Okay, I've got one last question I wanted to ask you. I had a fascinating chat with Olga. So I went to see the current president of Yafix about a study he's been doing in his deviated notice of injecting uh, botulism of toxin straight at the end of his surgery. What do you think about it? I think it's the smartest idea ever because being a maxillofacial surgery, you know, we do maxillary surgery and uh, we discovered that by injecting the internal pterygoids muscle and the external pterygoids in the muscle there, mm -hmm. there is less uh, possibility, less chance of recurrence, which is like uh, for the people that have open bite deformities, for example, where the contraction of the muscle after the surgery can give them a little bit of relapse and it's much more difficult to control it because you have to follow up with the orthodontics and stuff like that. So this is smart to me because mm -hmm. the contraction of the muscles that I was mentioning before can give the opportunity to the nose to heal in a proper way. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we have to take into account because like two or four units of botulinum toxin, whatever the toxin it depends mm -hmm. if it's on a botulinum toxin, then there would be also uh, the, the new thing is that there is a company that will make a toxin that lasts 15 days. This would be perfect. For wow, us. that'll be cool. That'll yeah. be cool. Because it gives the patient to get the opportunity to see themselves in the face. So yeah. many people are scared to make the freeze yeah. aspect. So with 15 days, it's gone. And then you can make the other one that lasts six months. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's it.
Wow. So this is a good idea. I love it. That's fantastic. Yeah, story. I'm excited, man. It's it's so nice to chat to you. See how excited you are. You are. Yeah, uh, no, it's geek, man. <laughs> and look, I just finished the two books and then we have four books <laughs> in process. Uh -huh. that's, so that's, that's a really yeah. exciting life <laughs> that we have. We, we love this. Uh, we are passionate and uh, I can see and I have my passions. I love photography, I love traveling, I love sports, as you, as yourself. But uh, doing this survey and give people the chance to understand your experience is the best way mm -hmm. to leave a memory in this uh, in this world. So, awesome. Well, on behalf of everybody around the world listening to your podcast, thank you very much. My great and pleasure. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Make sure you um, tune in for next week's episode.